This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. We're gonna go check some trees. I think the cashew first, <clears throat> and then other trees that have fruit. I need to check, but before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at our aeroids for a second. So surprising that um, you know we're organic certified, biodynamic certified, rare tropical fruit farm uh, in Bureau Beach, Florida, and I'm originally from California, and I just I've been here for I don't know we've had a house in Florida for 13 years, uh, but I've lived here for almost 11, and um, in Florida. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just blown away that you can grow all this stuff and you don't have to water it <laughs> and you don't have to really fertilize it um, just add little bits of organic matter and compost pretty much and don't disturb it and it takes care of itself it's truly an amazing spot in the U.S., probably in the world, uh, the largest concentration of freshwater springs, combined with the calcareous rock uh, and the perfect climate, it enables you to grow anything uh, naturally, for the most part. If you just add some manure, that's kind of the missing ingredient. Uh, that people fail to realize. Zebu manure in particular. I am a firm believer in the Zebu cow <clears throat> from India, and uh, especially for growing what, you know, mangoes and jackfruit, which are indigenous to India. So it just makes sense, especially since the manure is not the same in the zebu as it is in the Bose, Indi or Bose Taurus cow. The Indian zebu cow is Bose Indicus. <clears throat> so these things are like amazing, these uh, anthuriums. And I just noticed this, uh, this is anthurium. Uh, just look at the size of this. I mean, uh, they're huge. And um, they were like triple the size of the original leaf that came with it not that long ago. And it's got a new growth point um, coming out. That's quick. So I imagine this other one back there will, because I just transplanted it. So it's amazing. So I got a few new plants. I got this uh, Monstero, Monstera Ario Pineda, Pinatum. Is it Pinatum or Pineda? Panada. <clears throat> and the leaves have the holes in it like the Deliciosa, but they're kind of a long, narrower leaf. Um, very beautiful plant. Um, this is it. Monstera Ario Pinata. And then I got this uh, Monstera Lechleriana. These are from Equigenera USA. Seem to be very easy plants. Very easy. This, I was watching too many uh, <laughs> houseplant people on, online and it was like they just they like to use their chemicals and it's like really scary to me because nurseries are a dirty place and all these kids are like growing hydroponically indoors and if they're not growing hydroponically they're using like slow slow release fertilizers same difference and you don't have to have a huge farm if you're doing it indoors to get the same toxic results. 
just so you know, it's like really frightening that they've kind of tried to say that hydroponics will clean the air in your house. No. <laughs> you have to have the life in the soil in combination with the plant and the substrate to clean the air. It's not just the plants by themselves. And it's definitely not the plants with your pollutants, so. Um, I don't know, I try to make people pay attention to what they're doing because it's destroying our chances of ever creating Eden here in Florida the chemicals. Uh, we're killing the manatees and we're killing the lagoon and um, there just doesn't seem to be, they're more interested in shutting down drag queens <laughs> than taking care of the real problems that Florida has. It's just, I don't know. It's weird, weird time. Anyway, off to the cashew. Let me look at this tree tomato while I'm over here. So green and lush here. So this is all, you know, dry farm. We don't water anything. We just plant it and walk away. I do focus on soil health. You know, this is a regenerative farm system. We do not walk on anything except for the path. And this is a path. So I have little footpaths. And I stick to them. Except when I'm harvesting. Um, this thing is just doing so well. And dry farmed, the turmeric's all coming up. Dry farmed, uh, tree tomatoes, I'm sure are, is not done anywhere else. I'm fairly certain in Florida, <clears throat> in the ground that I know of. If any of you all are doing it like me, please let me know so we can compare notes. Um, but I'm excited about, look at the rat. Hi, little rat. What are you doing? <sighs> Rats, snakes, lizards, spiders, raccoons, bobcats, bunnies, hawks. Not very many squirrels that get picked off by the owls at night, so. But there's some, so this Quimac tree is um, hanging on to its fruit. I imagine this year it'll hang on to its fruit better than last year and give us some more fruit than the, looks like it's getting ready to flower again. In fact, it is, I could see it. So these things just continuously flower for months and months and months. There's the fruit. It looks just like the flower, but it's, look at this huge flower, all those little white dots are the flower on this thing and the entire thing's covered like that um so it'll keep doing it and supposedly this thing produces well i don't know why they would lie but two thousand pounds of fruit per tree per year so i see why it's just a super producer and it's my favorite fruit the quimac tree the artocarpus it's in the jackfruit family the <clears throat> a few of our sapodilla trees got fried. I think like three. Oh, we have like 20 of them. 20 sapodillas. We don't have tons of them. Their fruit's so sweet. They're so easy, but they're, they produce a lot of fruit. So I don't know. I'm more into the garcinias. This jackfruit's looking good. Oh, let me look at this uh, uh, dragon fruit. So we, I grow dragon fruit. I've been growing dragon fruit for 
20 years, but I'm like a major dragon fruit snob. So I only like the giant purple ones or the giant yellow ones. And I mean, I like the Bruni because of the red flower, but the fruit, no. Uh, but the red flower is nice. So I have that. And this is our dragon fruit, one of them. This is a, a dragon fruit that produced a three pound purple fruit that I'm growing seeds out from. Um, and Voodoo Child mixed together, but it goes all the way up into the palm tree and it's like I don't know, 50 feet up there, probably 40. I, I like the fruit, but I have to use my picker to get the fruit off this. fruit for later and bee fruit has been a good um it's a good money crop it's basically five dollars of fruit or five dollars a seed and we have some left i have a lot left it's like the tree that keeps on giving it's like i imagine how the koi muck's gonna be we have two producing koi muck trees two different varieties um, both from very reliable sources and I've had the fruit off both of them, and I like it. Hmm. They're good fruit. I'll come out here and pick some tomorrow, it looks like. Not quite ready. Look at that dragon fruit. Aww. All these people have all this stuff they like say you have to do and um, <laughs> in Florida and it's like, dude, does it look like I have to do anything? I mean, it's, it's like you don't walk on it so you don't have to go in there. And for dragon fruit, it's like a low input, um, it's like the orchids. It's like a epiphyte. So it's, I don't know. I just don't understand how they've confused everyone to think that they're actually even needed to grow fruit in Florida. <laughs> it's just manure and, the, and if you're respecting the soil by staying off of it, I firmly believe that's like super important. Um, gotta let the weeds grow. Life needs the weeds to live in the, the roots. So, um, this is a male MB tree that it's produced like four fruit total in its lifetime. It's probably what most people have in their yard that don't get fruit, would be my guess. Lychees, I thought were uh, going to flower because we've had them flower in June and July before. One of them, two of them maybe. And But no, this is just all new growth. This swamp dried up for the first time. Sounds like two raccoons fighting. It scared me. Okay, so this uh, cashew tree doesn't look like it's quite ready. This is a pretty big tree. I see fruit on it. I'll go up here. 
I finally figured out what was going on with my citrus, why it was like, get brown, it'd be green one day and then the next day it's brown on top. It, it, that's from the, the little black bird up there on the thing, the starlings. They attack the fruit and I've been trying to figure out what that was. I thought it was from smoke from the neighbors. I knew it wasn't greening because it would just, it wasn't there one day and then it'd come out the next day and it'd be there. So, oh, these are getting close. Yes. But it's the starlings were doing it. So I guess I just have to plant a bunch more citrus. Um, I think we have a hundred trees, citrus, different types. So cashew's getting bigger. I see one got knocked down. I'm gonna get that seed. But there's quite a bit of fruit on this thing, and it's this is like the Quimac, it just keeps flowering and flowering and flowering and um, fruiting. Oh, I see somebody's pecking at this too. see multiple fruits on the ground. Who in the hell is doing that? The birds, I'm sure. Oh, oh well. I got the seeds. I'll get some fruit off that. What a great crop for Florida. Um, I mean, look at that. This fruits, now I have to like start coming out here every day, I see. Uh, imagine I could do some thread. My mother taught me this when I was a child, put thread through the tree. I could get a spool of thread, cotton thread, tie it up here and throw it over the tree a bunch of times. Um, that keeps the, keeps the birds out of it. Yeah, see, you can just see they peck the hell out of it. That's not greening, that's from the birds pecking it. They must have learned that from all the living in Florida citrus all their lives. Uh, sure look like flowers on this beaches were trying to come out, but they're not. They're not. see this Valkyrie mango tree. I found some sweet tart mangoes that I didn't even know I had on a tree, which was a nice surprise yesterday. I thought I was all done with sweet tart mangoes and there they were. Uh, the Valkyrie tree is looking good. Yeah, those birds are even getting a little tiny fruit. At least I finally figured out what's doing that. Um, if I hadn't seen it, I think I did a video where they were doing it. My last video, I believe. A little white sapote tree. Yeah, the cashews are um, pretty close. Obviously, if I got seeds, I can see where they pecked them. Those nasty little birds. Huh? That's the problem. Critters. But I like the critters, so 
there's plenty of fruit here for me and I'm able to sell quite a bit it seems I can still sell the seeds probably the seeds are worth more than the fruit but I wanted to freeze dry all the fruit I want to see how that was there's those there's those birds yeah stay in the eat what you're supposed to eat not my fruit please people bird people more lychees I have a big seed growing at Cha Cha over here somewhere of the one of those improved improved variety ones oh there it is so yeah you see the tree and I'm all proud of how healthy it looks there it is Cha Cha poking up from the grass uh, it's about 20 inches got some new growth coming out on it I just plant a cha-cha directly in the ground um, from seed hey a moo mouse look at my bull's hump I think the zebu cows are needed uh, thank God India was so far advanced. Look at his hump. Oh, I love my little babies. Have a good day, <laughs> darling little things. Um, and their writings and their knowledge. And it's obvious that everything was centered around food. Um, and they just know so much. It just, I mean, it's, it's an, uh, of one place I think I would like to go is India. Um, I have not been, I need to go, I think. <clears throat> Their descriptions of, <clears throat> what basically is Eden. speaks to me, I guess. I believe the zebu cows were, are here to create paradise. Um, this uh, Heliconia rostrata is uh, doing good. I love the flowers on these things. Just really, I don't get up all in there and trim them all, all the time. Uh, um, it's too much work, I guess. If I had a small yard, it would not be a problem, but when you have like, I don't know, 50 heliconia, heliconia plots. It changes, changes things. You have to deal with everything else. <clears throat> they are pretty. Mm -hmm. Look at this, a cha-cha tree. It's just so surprising that everything just grows the exact same way. The house plants, the, <clears throat> the fruit trees, the sugar cane. Oh yeah, I'm seeing uh, a cha-cha fruit getting closer. That's a round one. They usually have little nipples at the bottom, or you know, they're a little more elongated than that. I'm just gonna go through here. This 
this tree is getting quite wide now. I see what they meant where the branches come out. Oh yeah. See, it's getting, this fruit over here is getting all right. Plus it's still green. Surprising there's a few that are Very heavy fruit. I'm gonna let it go another day. The birds don't see the fruit in there, so I'm glad I have a lot of those trees because the fruit's hidden from the um, from the uh, hungry birds, starlings, <clears throat> and the crows. See my little cycads coming up. I've got to divide these things and move them around. See how the little cycads that are, they were just those little tiny starts let me go get a better angle that are all planted through here uh, encephalardus are finally uh, finally showing their leaves which I, I planted them I stopped planting them about a year ago um, buying them and planting them I'd buy like I don't know, I'd buy three little ones a month. I did that for like a year and planted them through here. And this one got missed by the, uh, by this palm tree that went down. See it right there? Uh, thank God. I buy them tiny and put them out here you know, don't water them because they're drought tolerant and um, they do just fine. Uh, here's another one. It's got new leaves I see down there. The blue, I like the blue one. There's another one right here, a different type. Pretty. So I found that every fruit tree likes to have some manure dumped near it, like our, you know, our zebu manure. And that's kind of all I like to do anymore. It's just because I have to clean the zebu barn every day, zebu and donkey barn, and uh, I've gotten that habit having horses all my life, and. Uh, it's just something I continued doing. Gotta clean the stalls. Okay, so here's this, uh, one of these aeroids. This is uh, Philodendron Charonier. And this was uh, a new leaf that came up. That's like dirt from this stuff splattering on it. Uh, manure and stuff that I put here. This is a zebu manure. And this is a new leaf. But it uh, was just a node cutting with one leaf, and the one leaf died, and it's got uh, new growth coming out. This is a Monstero subpinata that doesn't have any new leaves on it right here. Just a little stick still, but it's very green, and it appears like it's trying to put out a new leaf. But we will see. Now that it's raining, I can plant some others out here. I kind of rushed it a little bit with the planting them during the drought. Um, 
big cuttings I did in the winter, probably because it was cooler and they just stayed in a state of suspended animation. Um, were like cacti more or less because of the calcium oxalate in their tissues, keep them um, alive longer without water. You can cut a cacti and not plant it for a couple months and then plant it and it's just fine. These I think are the same way. Maybe not a couple months, but if you uh, plant it in the winter and it's not raining and you the cutting, a long big cutting and um, it doesn't die and it can handle the drought. It sends down roots during the drought time. So, uh, and then grows as soon as it gets warm and wet. So they're just kind of easy and they grow very well organically, obviously. So I have the Real Organic Project. Yeah, you know, we're Real Organic Project certified that want to come by and do a uh, just a tour and a video, um, but I guess I could let them do that since we are uh, certified with them, but I was a little angry with them because they like <laughs> got rid of all my information and sent, sent it only to my partner and like didn't even include me in their their texts or anything and I was like why in the heck is that going on now but they worked through it they got the message loud and clear and uh, so I guess I uh, will do it in a, a video with them or let them come and film some stuff So these sugar apples along here, along the driveway, are doing good, finally. Um, everything got like 50 pounds of manure, every sugar apple. But this driveway area has always been a challenging spot because it was like mowed and there was a chain link fence along here and guaranteed they sprayed glyphosate on that from the 80s on, but we've had the place a little more than six years and um, it's finally, uh, finally, I don't know, starting to uh, move past the, the, uh, 57 years of lawn that this was, chemical lawn. Takes a while to clean out the uh, chemicals from your soil. Um, I believe the fungi are responsible for doing that. Uh, they don't like to colonize areas that are, you know, compacted or they can't colonize or you're using chemicals on, or for sure you're using fungicides on and herbicides. Um, just, it just doesn't happen overnight if you're reclaiming a space like that. It takes time. It took foliar sprays, um, the biodynamic preps, and when I found Humus formation here, I would harvest that and make teas out of that and spray daily. And I believe that played a significant role in um, moving our system t t to a healthy, dynamic, uh, productive system where it's getting at now. So we have these trees at our beach house and they don't lose their leaves. They lose their leaves here. Um, the beach house sugar apples produce two crops a year, one in the winter and one in the summer. Um, and they're, you know, managed like this, but I don't give them the manure. I gave them manure one time in uh, 11 years, 10 years.
a tiny little bit. I think it was like five pounds of uh, biodynamic compost. So they don't produce a lot of fruit like the ones here. If you give them the zebu manure, they produce lots of fruit, obviously. Um, or I'm sure other manures. Or, you know, like people use earthworm castings. I think it's important to use the cow. I don't think you can get to paradise without including the cow. I, I firmly believe the zebu cow. I firmly believe that. So look at this citrus over here that the... birds didn't get this fruit um so there's a lot of fruit on these this black sapote and it looks good it's good size i've screwed up picking black sapote fruit last year but that ain't gonna happen again um you know i'm this is this whole farm tropical fruit thing is new to me so as the farm grows i learn so uh it's been a good thing but obviously I've learned. Um, so they didn't get this fruit, but I saw them on this tree somewhere. There's, yeah, here's some fruit that they attacked. This is, this is what happens. See the bird pecks? Peck, 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 peck. That's what it is. <clears throat> um, I remember they got half the fruit last year. Not all of it got attacked. Um, this is not greening. This is from like this. This is from uh, starlings. Just saying. So the fruit it didn't kill the fruit, but it it left a spot on it on the you know the part that, at the top that they peck, which isn't attractive, but. At least I know what it is now. And, um, okay. Just dragging fruit over here, flowering also. At least I know what it is, finally. I was thinking it was from the neighbors burning their glyphosate citrus stuff and, you know, the worst possible scenario. Not a natural one. This is the starlings. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, neighbors. Um, <sighs> here's the Florigon fruit. Florigon. Florigons are good fruits. So here's this uh, dragon fruit growing on this uh, log. I got all the good varieties off here that I liked. It's just, it's too many vines grow on it and it rots and um, it's uh, just not a good place to, would require too much maintenance and not, I'm just not into that. The palm trees are much easier. I don't mind using a picker to pick the fruit. And look at these sugar apples along the 12th Street. Uh, this little mango that got froze back is like, she's coming back. That's from the freeze. Fruit punch. set these mangoes down. Oh. We got some bananas. Got 150 of them planted. Uh, for the first time ever, we didn't have any bananas from the after the freeze, but now finally we have, uh, I see bananas again. I got a bunch of bunches this week or this weekend this winter but okay here's these sugar sugar apple trees now 
These things are just loaded with fruit and the fruit is really big, which has always been my issue with sugar apples, getting small fruit. Um, and I thought it was maybe because there was too much fruit on the tree, but the fruit would turn black. It would definitely be black by now, um, have black spots on it, a lot of it. And I thought it was because I was leaving some dead fruit on the tree. Um, but I, that's not the case because I couldn't find all the fruits all the time. And then like six months later, I'd walk out on the road to pick up the trash and see that... Um, I had left some fruit, so that it, it didn't matter if I removed the fruit, the dead rotten fruit, the black fruit. So this is an Atamoya, a Geffner Atamoya that's uh, really uh, doing its thing. Uh, Atamoya is one of my favorite fruits. Um, Geffner Atamoya is very consistent and produces well. And we don't hand pollinate any of this stuff. Uh, it's just so unnecessary when you uh, have a biological system like this. This tree has got lots of fruit on it. All well-proportioned fruit. That's what I like to see. This one looks like it's going to be a big one. Okay, mm -hmm. the non-grafted Elama trees look so much better than the grafted ones. Grafted one, I should say. Just, it didn't, like, fare well. That's our, our grafted uh, Genova Red Alama. Still doesn't look that happy. So yeah, these don't get watered. They. just do really well. And none of them died from the freeze. Uh, none of the branches died back. And they're still producing fruit like crazy. Um, I'm very happy with them this year. I thought about giving up on sugar apples because the fruit was so unsatisfying uh, there was good the, the when it the fruit's good it's it's a top tier fruit but when the fruit is small and the fruit is seedy it's a fruit you don't want to plant so and usually what you buy is the fruit that's small and seedy so i wouldn't sell the fruit because i didn't like it but it looks like this year we're gonna sell sh sugar apple fruit and we have so much of it, I could probably sell it reasonable without raising the price like on all the other stuff. Uh, here's another Atamoya. It looks like it's just... Some of our Atamoyas are just now getting... Um, flowers on them. I don't know how many Atamoyas we have, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot, mostly little seedlings because I growing, grew the, the tree, the first tree out and then I'm growing the seeds from that. The seeds don't always make it, Adam wise. Might as 
I'll check the guava while I'm down here. I'm very excited about the uh, sugar apples because we have a lot of them. More than, at one time I think we had like 90, but some of them died in some, in this area in the middle where everything would not grow well. And now finally the bananas are growing there very well. So now I can probably plant the other trees back in there. I planted some Garcinia seeds because I don't think we could have too many Garcinias. So these are just not ready yet, obviously. So a chacha tree that's doing well. Um, starting to get the little branches on it. There's another big achacha over here. Uh, but it's only like seven feet. I know it's not even, if you can see through the tree, it's not gonna be producing fruit, I don't think. <clears throat> we have long gans. Uh, I didn't plant a lot of them here. We have a lot at our beach house that produce. Um, I wasn't that, I mean, I like long gans, so I had to plant them, but kind of I was driven by money. Um, and they were only $10 a pound, or $2 a pound. And now uh, they're like, people want them, but the nursery grown trees struggle dry farmed. Um, probably now that our soil health has been um, fixed. Mostly, um, I'm looking at fruit on this world's best, uh, mulberry. Now that our soil health has been our focus for six years, they could probably, they could probably uh, do the acquisition, or the transition, acquisition, the transition from uh, a chemical-based nutrient packing scheme or to a a natural farm system, regenerative farm system, like this. I probably trouble with you. This Inga spectabilis tree is our biggest one. And all the stuff around it, a lot of stuff around it froze. These mangoes froze. But this tree never got affected by the freeze. It dropped leaves, a lot of leaves during the drought, I think was probably the biggest thing. But it's come back stronger than ever. So here's a orange sherbet mango and I see one on the ground. Please don't let it be eating eaten. Yes. Are they ready? Let me get the food route left on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But this tree is tiny, it's uh, from a, uh, I've already gotten like several, not several, but yeah, several fruit off this tree. Um, I picked them a little too early, and so I was kind of waiting for it to uh, be the perfect time. And that was... Now, I guess probably tomorrow I should come back and check that tree again. The 
should look at those Malikas real quick while I'm over here. Maybe. I don't want to forget those mangoes though that I picked and set down. Anyway, <laughs> this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, Florida Natural Farming. I hope you have a beautiful day.